Start-stop technology was supposed to save fuel, protect the environment, and make driving more efficient. That's what the EPA promised. But what if the truth is very different? What if Start-stop doesn't save you money and actually destroys expensive engine components faster than normal driving ever could? Today we're breaking down the real story behind Start-Stop, why so many mechanics hate it, and why the EPA's claims were not the full picture. Let's start with the biggest problem. Start-Stop was never designed around real-world driving. The EPA mileage tests that promoted this system are done in controlled lab environments, smooth accelerations, predictable stops, and perfectly maintained vehicles. In that environment, start-stop saves a tiny amount of fuel, but the real world isn't a lab, you sit in traffic, you deal with heat, cold, dust, humidity, rough roads, sudden stops, and unpredictable engine loads, and in real-world driving, the fuel savings are almost always far less than the EPA claimed. But the real issue isn't the fuel savings, it's the long-term mechanical damage, Every time your engine stops, the oil inside begins draining down from the top end. When it restarts, even with modern pumps, there's a fraction of a second where metal parts are moving with less than ideal lubrication. One restart won't hurt anything, but thousands of restarts every year. That's real wear on bearings, cam components, timing chains, and high-pressure fuel pumps. Mechanics around the world have reported increased wear on engines equipped with start-stop systems. And here's the part the EPA didn't talk about. Those engines were upgraded with reinforced starters, stronger flywheels, and higher capacity batteries, all costing significantly more to repair or replace. Speaking of batteries, let's talk about one of the most common start-stop failures premature AGM battery death. These batteries are engineered to cycle repeatedly, but start-stop cycles them far more often than traditional driving ever did. Many drivers report replacing two to $300 AGM batteries years earlier than expected. And remember, when your start-stop battery fails, it often triggers a chain of warning lights, ABS, traction control, airbag systems, making the problem look much worse than it is. Then there's the starter motor. Start-stop starters are reinforced, yes, but they are still mechanical parts with a limited lifespan. A traditional starter might crank your engine five times a day. With start-stop, that number jumps to 50 or more on a normal commute. Multiply that by a year, and suddenly your starter has done the work of 10 years in just one. When it fails, you're looking at a repair that ranges anywhere from $400 to over $1,200 depending on the vehicle. But here's a truth most people never hear. Start-stop does not work when your engine is under high load, when the AC is in full demand, when the battery is weak, or when the cabin needs heating. That means you're not getting the promised fuel savings during the most demanding conditions. The exact moments when you want the system to work. Now let's talk about safety. Yes, safety. Some mechanics and even driving instructors say, start-stop can delay acceleration in critical moments, like when you're trying to merge into traffic or make a quick turn across a busy intersection. You know, that tiny fraction of a second before the engine restarts can actually make a big difference when every second counts. There's also a long-term carbon buildup to consider. Engines today are mostly direct injected, which means fuel doesn't wash over the intake valves the way it used to. When you pair that with constant stop-start cycles and those lower operating temperatures you get in city driving, well, you end up with faster carbon buildup. That can mean rough idle, poor acceleration, misfires, and, honestly, some pretty costly intake cleanings. So, why did the EPA push start-stop so hard? Well, it's because automakers needed a cheap way to hit those strict emissions targets. Start-stop technology allowed them to improve test cycle numbers without redesigning engines from the ground up. Now to be fair, start-stop does work well in certain scenarios. Long red lights, predictable urban commuting, and mild climates help reduce fuel waste. But for the average driver, the savings are tiny compared to the long-term costs. 
Most experienced mechanics will tell you the same thing. If your car lets you turn start-stop off, turn it off. Use it only when you actually want to save fuel, not automatically every time you drive. So, here's the truth. Start-stop isn't evil and it's not useless, but it is absolutely not the engine-saving, planet-saving miracle we were told. It's a compromise system built to satisfy regulations, not a feature that improves your engine's health. If this video opened your eyes, hit that like button, and if you want more brutally honest breakdowns of modern car technology without the marketing fluff, make sure you subscribe. The truth matters and you deserve to hear it.